welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the Haunted Attraction Haunted Entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you once again. If you're catching us live, you're catching us on a Sunday. If you're catching the recorded version, it's the day after or whenever. That's the nature of recorded media. Yeah. You're allowed to consume it whenever. You don't have to consume it the day it's released. Though you should. You mm-hmm. should. No, okay. Do, do it on your time. Seriously, though. But yes. <laughs> If you are interested in what we are dropping, what we are putting down, please follow us at all of our places. We're hauntweekly.com, we're hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly. You might begin sensing a pattern here, yeah. H-A-U-N-T, weekly, at all these places. Give us a like, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, click that bell icon. You'll get notified when the recorded versions go up there. Mm-hmm. Also, though, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. We're somewhere not far. We're not far. So, yes. Um, we are we are back this week with a topic that I'm actually really excited about. I know. You've this, been talking about it for days. This this is after last week's episode. Last week's was a rough one. Right. Where we had to say some things about the way the season's going that did not make us happy to say. Right. It was it was rough, and I know it was for probably rough to hear, but it was rough for us to say too. Yeah. So it was a downer, and I I admit I, I was kind of curious how we were going to get our um our energy back. Yeah. And then it was a Halloween miracle. Oh wow! Because in a recent uh, weekly question, mm-hmm. we asked what was your favorite lighting trick. Yes. And a lot of people came back and said Pepper's Ghost, which yeah. was interesting to me because, oh, yeah, Pepper's Ghost is fun and all. I, I, I've i seen some right. great applications like Disney's Haunted Mansion. We'll get into that in a minute. But I never really thought of it as my favorite lighting trick for a haunt hmm. just because, you know, there's so many other things out there right. you can do with lighting than Pepper's Ghost. And honestly, most haunted attractions that have a Pepper's Ghost don't really make good use of it in my experience. Yeah, I think that the best use of it was probably um, actually Chamber of Horrors when they were out in Laplace. Yeah. Because they had a a wheelchair actor who would actually roll forward through mm. the projection. So. Yeah. And it, But the, the issue, though, was you had to stand there and wait for it to happen. And no. People don't stand and wait in haunts a whole lot. No. So, anyways. so But we were curious about it. And then, lo and behold... Um, or like Monday, like Sun, like right after we got off the podcast, pretty much. Yeah. There was an article drop. We'll talk more about from where about the history of Pepper's Ghost. And I first I was like, you can't make an article about this. <laughs> yes, they can, and it was damned interesting. And so we did our own research. We've looked up some additional information, and we're going to be dropping a lot of knowledge bombs about Pepper's Ghost this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking forward to it. But first things first, we have our normal weekly housekeeping to take care of. And that includes, first of all, announcing last week's winner from the question of the week. Yes. And okay, last week's question of the week was, um, what are you, if you're not not able to haunt, what are you doing to keep the spirit of the season alive? Something to that effect. And I've got to say, we have gotten more responses to that than I think we ever got. Hands down. And in fact, it was a little weird because we actually got responses in every format we accept responses. Exactly. We got them on Facebook. We got them on Twitter. We got them emailed to us. We got them via YouTube comments. Everywhere. You know how I go through that? We're on that blah, 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 blah. And all these things every week. Yeah, this time, you guys were on every single thing this week. And that was awesome. Exactly. So I appreciate it. And it was very difficult to pick a winner this week. It was actually extremely difficult to pick one. But we're going mm-hmm. this week with a Mr. Chad Smith, who exactly. was watching us on YouTube. Yes. And I'll just read his answer, I think, uh, it speaks for itself. I don't know if you look at comments on here. (laughs) But I have apparently we do. Uh, but I have an answer for the week to the weekly question. I own a charity haunt since we can't open. I've thrown myself into selling masks and opening an Etsy store to sell my haunt actor Halloween masks. Mm -hmm. Excellent idea. 
Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Turn that is, it into a business. That is great. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, uh, that was, I, I, I really thought, because I like that one, because it was, that's the way to turn a negative into a major positive. Mm-hmm. And that's something I think we're all kind of having to do in our own ways this season. And so I was really happy to see that. So, Chad, I will do my best to get in contact with you. Um, please, since it was a YouTube comment, we have limited means of reaching out to them. Right. Um, if you, when you hear this, go to hauntweekly.com, use the contact form, let us know who you are and where you at. And we'll, where, where you at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to turn New Orleans real fast. I'm you did. A, where, where you at? Let us know where you're at, and we'll, um, we'll, Crystal will be sending you next early next month the uh, various goodies. I don't know what the goodies are. Crystal's been making them. She's yeah. been she's been keeping this secret from me <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> That's Which I, not entirely true. Yeah, but it may feel like it. But I got But like I said, though, we had so many great answers. Yes. And another great answer we got was from Greg Reinhardt, who actually emailed his in. Mm-hmm. Um, and what he's doing is making a Spotify Halloween radio station for Spotify, basically. Yes. For use at a, if, if I remember correctly, for use at another attraction. Mm-hmm. It was a very long reply. I didn't copy and paste the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very good reply, but it was yes. long. And I didn't want to read it verbatim. But, and I, I loved that idea. We have always depended upon the power of Halloween music and Halloween adjacent music to get us in the mood, even in the best of years. Right. Even in the best and bestest of years, you you sometimes need a pick me up. You need a little haunt fusion, you know. You, exactly. You, you need that, and we already have this mammoth Halloween list mm-hmm. that we maintain, and we we keep it in Apple Music. Right. But we listened to what he said, and we had an idea. Mm-hmm. So Greg has inspired this week's question. Oh, and by the way, another answer we got that I, I wanted to quickly turn to was Japes said he had, was having a baby. Yes. And Japes, that is cheating. You're yeah. not allowed to cheat on the weekly question. That is literally <laughs> cheating. So, but but anyway, so, sorry, I just had to point that out. The Japes like one ups everyone by having a kid. <laughs> oh, someone else was getting married, but I oh, don't see it. Oh, I guess my... I guess that key, that competes yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, we had a ton of great answers. We did. But anyways, Greg Reinhardt making Halloween radio station. We're gonna make a similar playlist for YouTube. Yes. And we chose YouTube because it's the most accessible. Um, anyone, pretty much anyone with a Google account can access it and we can make a playlist and just share it with the world. And yeah, so yeah, we've got a ton of ideas for it. So yep, we've already been t- pulling out our stuff, but that leads us to this week's question. What is your favorite Halloween song? Right. And, and we all know that, um, this is Halloween. It just puts everybody in the mood. So we're going to eliminate that question, that answer. Yeah. However, there's a reason we, it's number one. Don't get me wrong. Exactly. We love it. Um, but we want something that gives you that same kind of feeling. Whenever you know, you just get the chills down, all the way down from hearing it, and you get excited for the season. Mm-hmm. What is that? That song. What is that song or songs? You know, to, to yeah. also have multiple ideas. And yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to take your suggestions, add them in with what we've got. Mm-hmm. And compile a list, and hopefully we should be able to share it either next week or the week after. Hopefully next week, but we right. got a busy week coming. It looks like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so we'll see how time allows. This, then, unfortunately, this is not our vocation. Right. But yes, what is your favorite Halloween song? Now, Crystal, you answer first. Okay. Um, I have a ton, but the one that I always make sure gets played whenever we start doing our video battle for the first Halloween mm-hmm. is um, "Eat My Pumpkin Trick or Treat." It's a, a metal song that it's death metal, mm-hmm. but it's this little innocent girl who is going trick or treating and then it just all turns to hell. It's awesome. And it was something that was recommended to me whenever I posed this question a few years ago, actually, <laughs> by one of our haunter friends. Okay. Interesting. Uh, for me, okay, it's always difficult because there are so many. We have such a long list. I love my Halloween comedy songs. Mm-hmm. Like my my first one's oh yeah, it's got to be Haywood Banks Halloween because I I love that one. It's a hilarious song, but no, it's a comedy song. It doesn't really get you in the spirit. It just it, it's meant to be funny. So the ones that like amp me up and really get me in that place. Um, 
I would say Rob Zombie's What leaps out, but uh, you can pull almost any Rob Zombie song, but What just happens to be one I really uh, I love the hook on. And I think um, the Hearst song, mm-hmm. because that one's kind of the other st- other energy. Right. Where, where uh, What is like, amp you up, we're going to murder you and slaughter you. We're going to, we are the kings of Halloween. And yeah. we, we are, we're the one that knocks, you know, we are. Where the danger, mm-hmm. and the her song is the opposite side of it, where it's the more down to earth or creepy, you know, meek vibe, but still very, very spooky and unsettling. Yeah. I mean, how many how many songs do you know that have very graphic de- um, descriptions of decomposition in it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I I love that song. Yeah, and the Harley Poe version is the one we listen to the most. But as we found out last night when we were goofing off on YouTube, there are a lot of interesting covers of it. So a ton. Feel free to play around with that. <laughs> yeah, I think when we do our list, we'll probably make it the Harley Poe version, just because the one we're most familiar with. Right. Um. And real quick before we move forward, um, Greg Reinhardt said that the Spotify channel is actually being made by Dorney Park Haunt Manage. Oh, okay. Sorry. So he's involved oh, okay. with that, but yeah. But no, but the okay, but still the idea of making a right new, exactly. radio station. My apologies, I misunderstood. Um, it's been a it's been a week. Yes, we were supposed to get hit by a hurricane, uh-huh. then we didn't. Right. Um, Which so. it is, you know, it's still disruptive. <laughs> that's it's, the, and that's the thing that people may not understand is that it's still freaking. Insane. Because, and the thing about it is, is you never have 100% of your CPU, your mental CPU cycles Mm -hmm. dedicated to whatever it is you're doing. Right. Because you always have 20% that's running out and checking weather forecasts and checking what the hurricane center is saying. Mm -hmm. You always have that tension. Okay, how do I, is the generator working? Do I need to gas up the car and get out of here? How do right. we how do we take care of the windows? What do we you know? You've got do all. Do we the, have to di- take down our display? Yeah, and we almost took down the display on Wednesday. We did. We were very close. It looked like we were going to be hit head on enough to not make that display being up a good idea. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but they'd been trending the track further and further and further west. And so I basically said, look, I don't feel like taking down the goddamn display today. What do you mm-hmm. say we watch the trend tomorrow and we can get it down? The earliest the winds were going to be there at that time, they were saying it would be like Friday at 8 a.m. So it's like we can take it, we can get it down before any winds actually come. Yeah. Um, and we watched, and sure enough, we woke up Thursday morning and the track had moved well past Lafayette into Lake Charles. Mm-hmm. And we weren't looking at getting any serious winds. And we had a, a blustery day Friday. Yeah. But Friday was a perfectly normal day. I went out. I got uh, some blood drawn. Yeah. I uh, brought home Taco Bell for lunch. Yeah. I worked. You worked. I worked. Um, yeah. yeah. Boring, boring Friday before a holiday weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, that was the thing. It, it, it's like it ended up being pretty much a normal day. We did have some squalls come through. But I have to say, for a display literally made with Tinker Toys and zip ties, <laughs> yeah, it held up remarkably well. It did. I, I am actually breathtaking. I'm, I, it was funny, though. The, the skeleton we have in the cauldron um, went on a little trip. Mm-hmm. He actually fell off the thing, he, the, the block he's on, and apparently he, like, rolled his ass into the middle of the yard, yeah. like, several feet away from the display. And it's like, these guys, I didn't know you could walk. This would have made my life so much easier. I wouldn't have been carrying the skeletons everywhere. Apparently they can walk. Mm-hmm. You know? Who yeah. knew? Had a little life in them after all. Oh, Strange thing. So we ended up, uh, this weekend, uh, what we've been doing is finishing the display. All the other stuff. We're going to have photos of it, middle of the week. We're adding the final touches now. The stake light border, a few additional lights are going to go. In fact, one of the things we have to do is after we get all of this, we have to go check the aiming of some of the lights we added and see if the brightness and the intensity are right. Um, so, yeah, we've got all the skeletons outside of it. We have a skeleton queue line now for going right. in, to go into the ha- skeleton haunted house. Exactly. We had one guy being scared in a room. We have one family that's six feet away. And if you can't tell where that joke is going, I you're not a haunter. Turn in the card. <laughs> well, and... <laughs> you haven't been listening to us at least. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, we have that. We have a skeleton who shows up without a mask, getting one from a security guard. Right. And we have another on the other side, because our the imaginary exit. exit of this. Yeah. There's a skeleton running away from a woman with her neck that looks all broken and angled exactly. and chasing him. Yeah, it's hilarious. And we also have our horsies out. No. Which I don't know why we didn't just stand the horse up like that previously. I don't know. I, I don't know. We have a, a giant... I, I do know. Why? I know. The, the light the, tunnel? The tunnel. The tunnel would be in the way. That's yeah. why. That's why. Okay. Answer our question. But no, it was hilarious because everyone knows those Home Depot ske- uh, horse skeletons they sold a few years back. Yeah. And I think they're still available. They are as state. They are completely unstable. <laughs> yes. I mean, they have an abusive relationship with gravity. It is not going well. Um, it is not going well. And so every year we put out the horses, we have to build a custom frame for using the Tinker Toy set yeah. that gets it so it's staked in the ground properly. And we looked at it and we're like, hey, wait a minute. We have a light pole in front of our house. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked since we got the house. Right. It just never worked. I never bothered with it because I wouldn't turn it on anyway. Mm-hmm. It just looks good. Um. So we're like, why don't we just zip tie to that? Yeah. Son of a bitch, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Then we put the rider on it. Mm-hmm. So basically, the uh, the light pole in our front yard is now a horse and rider. <laughs> it's no. great. It was actually yeah. the perfect height to be a hunchback rider. It was. So yeah. it really worked well. So I'm happy with the way the display is this year. I'm loving the humor. The neighbors have been saying very nice things. Mm-hmm. But I have to say, the neighbor that came by today while we were working in the yard, and go. Is this the place where there's the haunted house? <laughs> what the yeah. fuck you think? <laughs> I mean, you know, not all people with big yard displays in New Orleans have haunted houses. Yeah, that's true. But in our neighborhood, I think we're the only one. <laughs> okay, yeah. We've already got some great answers. The weekly question. Sorry, I was scrolling through the chat. Yeah, I've, this I've, is going to be a baller weekly question, isn't it? Yeah, I've been putting them into the uh, the new document. Yeah, too. That's, that's a good idea. I need to open that document. Up. Yeah. Um, but seriously, this is going to be a great weekly question. I'm so excited to see what I learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, both about you, go, you all, you lot, and what new songs I pick up. I've already learned a few things about you all. In this show. <laughs> we'll discuss that at the end when we revisit it, though. So yeah, we duck Delta. The display is up. It's almost finished. We're about two thirds away done with the stake lights, and then we've got to replace eighteen thousand goddamn bulbs. <laughs> it, yeah, it was, because that the stake lights are the only non LEDs we have. Right. I think the only non LEDs we even own anymore. Probably. Probably. So yeah. the the C seven bulbs do not survive well year over year so of course i've had to put in a walmart order for like eight bajillion c7 bulbs and they only sell them in four packs no (sighs) i remember some time ago i bought like a 24 pack of them but we've used all those so like i said those those just don't last they do not last so anyways yes we Going back to this week's topic, we're talking about the history of Pepper's Ghost. And right. we, and like I said, we were previously very strapped trying to come up with this topic because we were worried about how we would follow up last week. Um, but on October 6th, Mental Floss Magazine published an article entitled How Pepper's Ghost Became the Toast of Victorian London. Right. It's the name of the article. And a lot of this information, especially in the first half, is based on that. And then we bring in a lot of our stuff on the second half. But I'm going to link to it in the show notes. You'll have easy access. I do recommend reading it, if nothing else, because of the drawings and diagrams in it that obviously we can't show you on an audio podcast. Exactly. So it's, it's well worth clicking through, even if we're going to get through a lot of the information here. But yeah, the images included are, are great. Um, and basically, like two weeks ago, we asked your favorite lighting tricks, and several people came back with Pepper's Ghost, which I still find somewhat surprising. Yeah. Even though, I, I mean, I love, like, the Haunted Mansion's Pepper Ghost, the 90-foot one in the, in yeah. the hall. That, that That's great. I've seen some great uses of it. It's just, really? Favorite? Well, I, I think that part of it is that it's, you know, fairly cheap and easy for any haunter to set up. Which is funny because, as we're going to discuss, that's not how it started. Not at all. <laughs> not in the least. No. If you were thinking, oh, yeah, some asshat probably invented this to get some cheap scares, it, t- it was a little more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. But yeah, and and basically, though, we read through the article. It was really interesting. And then we read a bunch of other stuff. Crystal even read the book written by the... Well, I got halfway through it this morning. Yeah, you got, you got enough way through it. And the main reason for that is because it is not an easy read. I tried to read it multiple times. Yeah, it's not. And But we'll but, get to that book yeah, in a minute. Exactly. First, we got to start with the early history. Yes. Because here's the thing. We don't actually know who invented Pepper's Ghost. Nope. Because it probably wasn't actually invented. Right. It, it, it's an illusion that has been around as long as glass. Well, yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, light and glass interact and things and they happen. Ma- they have little babies and then... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, you can do a Pepper's Ghost right now if you have if it's dark outside where you are and you've got a light source behind you, like a lamp, mm-hmm. look out the window and the lamp will look like it's, it's on the other side. Yeah. It's in, like your lamp's in the yard. Yeah. It's easy. It's, that's, Sometimes our entire living room is outside. <laughs> yes. It's an easy illusion that you can literally do by accident. Um, so it was it was literally noticed eons ago, probably right around the time glass was first used in windows. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not something that anyone necessarily invented, right. per se, to be clear. Also, it's not actually an illusion. Right. I found this interesting. There's a, I did not realize there was a distinction between an optical illusion and an optical trick. Yes. Uh, that feels like the most pedantic thing I can think <laughs> of to point that out. So we're going to say illusion. Basically, an illusion is when you are seeing something that's not there. Right. And a trick is when you're seeing something that is there, but it's messing with your perspective on it in some way. So the way. illusion would be like the the gray blocks next to each yeah. other. Or, or, the, the, or, the, or, the, or the weird little triangly bits that look like they move yeah. whenever you stare. Or things that look like they're intertwined, but they really aren't. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. The, the, the flat 3D box. Yeah. Things like that are, are illusions where this is a trick. Everything is being properly represented. Light and your brain is seeing everything as it right. is. It just gives it an appearance that's different. But we're going to say illusion because fuck the pedants. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like forcing myself to always be perfectly accurate here. Right. Um, the earliest known written version of it was described in, oh Jesus Christ, I, will, <laughs> and I should have attempted to say this, was described by Guillaume Battista del Porta in a 16th century book, Magia Naturalis, which is just natural magic. <laughs> yes. And and basically, from what I understand, this book was like, you know, well, like a lot of the stuff we're going to be going into, he's basically that era's Bill Nye, right. where he was publishing books of neat things you can do that seem like magic, but aren't. <laughs> exactly. And how it works. So Science explained under <laughs> the guise of magic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but basically there's no uh, evidence that that version of it was ever used. It was apparently theoretical and just making it... Um, right. And showing that it could be done. So this brings us to the inventor, the actual inventor of Pepper's Ghost, mm-hmm. Henry Dirks. Yes. <laughs> Are you surprised by that name? It's yeah. not Pepper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, no. if anybody can be, really be claimed to be the inventor of the Pepper's Ghost illusion, it's Henry Dirks. Right. And, and I think he came up with the concept, but he wasn't able to actually build it. Yes. Uh, basically, he was born in Liverpool in 1806, uh-huh. and he was an engineer who came up with a idea for how to do that illusion in the theater. Right. The problem was um, that basically it required upending the whole goddamn theater. <laughs> exactly. You would have to recreate the theater entirely in order... We basically have to, to build the theater around this illusion. And yeah. he's like, you go to th- imagine this conversation with theater. And, oh, M- Mr. Bentley, Mr. Bentley, <laughs> I've got an idea. It'll create a ghost. It'll project on the stage. It'll look really cool. That's excellent. Uh, what do we have to do to make it happen? Oh, you just got to yank out every goddamn seat in the theater, elevate it about four <laughs> feet in the sky. Uh, son, are you high? <laughs> so. Did you visit the opium den? <laughs> what? Get this guy out of here. Oh, Victorian English. But he ended up in 1958 giving a presentation um, to the British Association for the Advancement of Science meeting in Leeds, Mm -hmm. where he described the setup and the idea. And, yeah, everything, because since the actor compartment with the ghost that be projected had to be under the seats of the theater. Right. And I don't know if you know this, but there's not a lot of room underneath the seats in theaters to hide actors normally. It was going to require basically... 
turned the theater upside down. Mm. Um, but that was when he met a man who has a much more familiar name to us. Yes. A man by the name of John Henry Pepper. And this is where he enters the story. Mm-hmm. Now, to give a little background on John Henry Pepper, he was born in 1821, and he was just an academic at heart, basically. Yeah. He was educated at King's, Co- King's College School, which is such a hard name to say for some reason. <laughs> Because it's called King's College School, which that just you only get to use one of the adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and he's also at the Russell Institution. He was employed as an assistant lecturer for, in chemistry, was actually his area of expertise, uh, but he was employed at the Granger School of Medicine. But he was also known for being an amazing showman. I bet, you know, in his chemistry lectures, he liked to blow shit up and just yeah. <laughs> do stuff like You can just imagine him. <laughs> yeah, chemistry was fun in that regard yeah you you, you, you so. physics can be too yeah. you can do some neat stuff with physics but yeah chemistry is always a blast ha 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 it's yeah. the joke show it is <laughs> anyways so in 1948 he arrived at the royal polytech institution which was founded 10 years prior with the goal of celebrating invention and ingenuity victorian england near this time was undergoing something of a scientific renaissance yeah. Where there was this huge fascination with science, not all of it legit science. <laughs> right. A fair amount of quackery. Even Dirks himself dabbled in perpetual motion machines. And st- yeah. And then he eventually uh, said, "This is bullcrap." And yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if somebody's saying that this is a thing that can happen, you're gonna play around with it until you figure out no. Yeah. No, and in that's 1948, bullshit. in 18, 1940, 1848, we didn't have quite the handle on why. A right. perpetual motion machine would never work. Exactly. Now we know. But basically what he would do at the Royal Polytechnic Institution, which I'm just going to the Royal Polytech because that's a long-ass thing to say. It is. Um, was he would try to do science demonstrations and attract large crowds. He would hold what were called spectacles. Yes, and he was actually very good at it. Yeah. He always drew a crowd. Um, one of... The first ones that he did was displaying the world's largest and smallest photos next to each other. And Both. Be- huh? <laughs> and because he's such a goddamn marketing genius, yep. they were photos of the Times newspaper. Exactly. So guess who got a lot of press coverage? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He was also playing harps with musicians, many stories below. Now, I didn't really understand what they were talking about here. I think here. The, the musicians were having their motion transferred by a levers and stuff. Oh, so it was um, basically study of sound waves. Uh, no, he was actually, I, what I understood was the harp was in the room and the musicians were many stories below, but the motions were being oh, transferred by okay. machines. Got you. And, and through physics. Okay. Which would be very impressive. It would be. It would be very impressive in 2020. Yeah. The article was not 100% clear on that, though. You're right. Yeah. And also had a trapeze artist walk on a tightrope to demonstrate balance. Which, which good way to do it. No. Yeah. We've seen that. So, yeah. He did He did all these spectacles. And mm-hmm. basically, he had some ins and outs with the institution. Uh, something, something, money. The, the article is vague on it. But long story short, too late. He <laughs> became managing director in eight in 1861. I don't know why I wrote 1961 in the show notes. That is clearly not right. <laughs> um, it was then he learned about Dirk's work and the idea of this Pepper's Ghost thing, and he had an idea that's like, hey, this would be something really cool to show off at the Royal Polytech. Exactly. And he had an idea to tweak it so that it could be done with almost no retrofitting. Yes. Basically, he had the brilliant idea of putting the actor in the orchestra pit that already existed in theaters. Duh. Exactly. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> brilliant leap there. Yeah. You, actors got to be below the stage. Why not use the orchestra pit that is already there? Right. Exactly. Ah. Uh. Use what you got. So place the actor box in front of the audience in the orchestra. Duh! It's just like this seems so obvious when you say it out loud, doesn't it? It does. Only an engineer like, can miss that. Yeah. Well, there was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to go into all that. But yes. My my uh, my 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 apologies to the engineers and the audience. But yes, you know what I mean. And it, there's some truth in that. Engineers are brilliant people who sometimes miss the patently obvious. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the joke. But anyways. They entered into a business arrangement, and 
The interesting thing about it, the original name for Pepper's Ghost was not Pepper's Ghost. No. Pepper, by all accounts, was very adamant that it not be called that because he wanted to give credit to who he still saw as the actual inventor. Exactly. Um, Dirks. So it was called the Dirksian Phantasmagoria. Yes. I might have an idea why that didn't one catch on. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper's Ghost is easier to say. I'm just going to say <laughs> he was a marketing genius, but that one was a whiff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Big swing and a miss on that name. The no. Dirk. Dirksian Phantasma it just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's got more sal- syllables than supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. But yes, um, there is a, this one bit of controversy, though, with Pepper, in that he apparently convinced Dirks to sign over all financial rights to it, but it's unclear how that came about. Yeah, even in his book, I didn't get to where that was. I got to where Dirks started getting mad at him. Because he writes about it. Mm-hmm. And he starts out the book throwing shade at Dirks. Um, yeah. He starts out, you know, saying that his idea was, you know, the basis for it, but it really wasn't practical, and I made it practical. Well, no, Which of course. Is true. I mean, it is true. And that is true. Of course it wasn't practical. An engineer designed it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. I don't know why I'm throwing shade at engineers. They, I love engineers. I know. I'm just being a dick. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um. But, you know, he actually, when reading the book, he had to defend this patent several times because there were several people who were saying that they had, you know, Pepper's ghost and using his name, Mm -hmm. but not actually providing the real experience. Yeah. So. And and, and that's, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. That comes up later Mm -hmm. in our saga. But yeah, one thing that, that we learn is that. Making this version of the illusion work was no. really goddamn difficult. Right. So anyways, when did it first work? Oh. Well, on Christmas Eve, 1962, Pepper no. staged a performance of A Haunted Man by Charles Dickens at the Polytechnic. No. no and this is something that differs from the article in his book. Okay. Because in his book, it says that it was Bulwer's A Strange Story. Um. According, you know, that's what it said there to a small group of, of faculty. Well, it may uh, that this may, the may the difference may be when it was shown to a small group of faculty versus the public debut. Exactly. So I think that may be the difference there. It may have been first done in front of the faculty, but the first time the public got to see it, yeah, was exactly. Chris, Christmas Eve, nineteen sixty two, and believe me, the public needed to see this shit because. Yeah. Um, as part of the performance, they used the illusion, basically having a ghost on stage, as right. you might expect, and the ghost could be walked through and mm-hmm. passed through and didn't actually have a physical presence, but was clearly visible. Mm-hmm. And it was worked by having the ghost in the um, the orchestra pit and then using a piece of glass at a 45 degree angle in front of the stage. And then you shine a bright light on the actor using basically the best lights they had at the time, which weren't that great. Right. There is a lot of description about lanterns and how to make light appear and not appear in this book. Yeah. Because it had to be done very, very precisely for this to work. <clears throat> like the over, like the, the big idea of how it worked is stupid simple to explain. Right. It's a piece of glass and there's a ghost underneath it. Boom. Right. Mm-hmm. That's easy. But to actually make it look good... And be a part of a play, that was a feat unto itself. That was a major, major feat. Um, so, yeah, it's this quickly became the talk of London and it made Pepper a celebrity pretty much overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, and once again, people started calling it Pepper's Ghost. I couldn't find any place where he called it that until later, until after the name had just took off. Yeah. I can't imagine why the Phantasmagoria <laughs> did not catch on. But anyways, he originally had planned to explain the illusion to the audience at the thing. Because that was kind of the bag, right? Yeah. Was, you know, hey, look at this neat trick I do and here's how I did it. But he didn't this time. Exactly. And well, and that's the thing. And it was the same with the professors that he brought in the mm-hmm. distinguished people of society. The guest, yeah. And the, the small first first showing, he was, you know, he had every intention showing them how it worked but then they were just awestruck like they their minds were completely blown so he's like 
I'm going to sit on this. I'm going to sit on this for a little yeah. bit. Um, but and it calls people to repeatedly flock to the theater to try to figure out how it was done. Yeah. I mean, literally, people are only going. I mean, uh, what whatever play it was. I mean, they said it was a haunted man for the public. Yeah. They must have seen a haunted man. They probably knew every goddamn word in a haunted man probably. by the end of it, right? Yeah. And so they kept going to work how it's done. Eventually, um, it was Professor Michael Faraday. Mm-hmm. Yes, that Michael Faraday. Yes, that Professor Faraday, the Faraday Cage fame, who eventually asked for an explanation and was the first one to get him to crack. <laughs> right. And then reveal how it was done. Um, so, yeah, it, it, this was the hit of London. Even the Queen's eldest son went to see this. Royalty was going to this. And, in fact, the... Uh, Royal Polytechnic had technically lost its royal name. Right. Because it was no longer being funded or had any connection with the royal family. Pepper's Ghost got them funding and re earned them the Royal Polytechnic name. Exactly. Which is pretty baller. You got to yeah. admit. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's, a, that's an amazing feat. However, it, the, the high times were not to last. No. Ultimately, it's just one trick. Mm hmm. Yeah. How many times can you do the same trick before people get tired of it and people stop being impressive? But the novelty wore off and other theaters began to try to replicate it. And I mm-hmm. emphasize the word try. Yes. <clears throat> because, yes, the big idea, stupid easy, pulling it off with the technology and the, especially the lighting tech yeah. they had in the 1860s, much more difficult. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was. And like I I said earlier, um, Pepper defended his patent yeah. lots of times. I think in France, though, I think it was France, um, patent law is different. So if you improve or make a change to it, then the person who made the most recent upgrade mm-hmm. gets the full patent. So he lost the, the patent in France because somebody was able to make a toy version for kids. <clears throat> Which is impressive in itself. That is very... Once again, <laughs> remember the time period we're talking about yeah. here. I mean, yeah, okay, you can easily do that today with LEDs and right. plexiglass and all the stuff we have today. Yeah. But to do that in 1862... Right. <laughs> that's, that's goddamn impressive. you got to admit. you got to admit. Yeah, and, and Pepper tipped his hat to the guy, by the way. Yeah, I, that, I would too. was able to do that. Yeah. That, that is very, very impressive, but it's such a difficult trick that, as you said, a lot of these things, come see the Pepper's Ghost Illusion, and it was crap. Yeah. <laughs> and so he felt he was being besmirched, not that they stole his idea, right. but that they were fucking it up. Exactly. <laughs> They're making his illusion look like garbage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but Pepper himself eventually left the institution. He tried to become basically a magician. Yeah. Uh, that didn't do very well. No. He ended up um, returning to the Polytechnic pretty soon thereafter. Um, but realistically, nothing else he did recapture that glory. No. This was, he peaked. You, you can, pe- kept, not many people can point to the day and time they peaked in life. Right. John Henry Pepper definitely can. Yeah. He can point to his exact peak. That was it. He did some neat stuff elsewhere. He uh, had what sounds like an absolutely awesome experiment in Australia to try to make it rain. Where basically he uh, blew as much shit up in the air as he could. <laughs> firing like fucking flat, uh, uh, the, the big cannons on ships up in the air and trying to make it all go boom. Way high up in the clouds to force it to rain. It did not work. But dear Jesus, would it have been awesome. It did it make it like, fun to try. <laughs> I just kind of want to try it <laughs> just to yeah. do it. But, but man, so he did eventually write a book, which you've read much, most of. Mm-hmm. It was entitled The History of the True History of the Ghost. It was published in 1890. It's in public domain now. You can, well, I'll link to a download of it. Be warned, it was published in 1890, and it's a difficult read. Yeah. Well, and a lot of it is that there are letters in the book, mm-hmm. a lot of its reviews and some comments. Um, like he said, I'm including this one because it made me laugh kind of thing. Yeah. And it was about a a guy who believed that it was a real ghost. <laughs> it was from a guy who said, no, this is a real thing. He actually you know. captured a fucking ghost and put it on stage. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Burn but, the witch. <laughs> yeah. But there was another one that was funny because they were really upset because um, he didn't consider what this would do to kids' minds. Yeah, that was like a newspaper it. review. And this 
Well, somebody please think of the children. Exactly. Who's chiming in. Think it's going to warp children's minds. No, that's for Nintendo to do about 100 years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, it, it did, like, inspire um, some of the romantic writers of the time yeah. to include ghosts in their stories. Yeah. Because if yeah. you've got this illusion that can be done with your story, why not write something for it? Yeah, I mean, think, I mean... Like Charles Dickens, a Christmas, um, a Christmas Carol, yeah, could have been much different with the Pepper's Ghost and having just some guy in white paint come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm the ghost of us. This isn't working. <laughs> no, no, that'd be much better with the Pepper's Ghost. You could, but very convincing illusion. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, Dirks and Pepper did have a falling out over all this. Yes, Dirks felt he wasn't getting enough credit. Pepper. By all accounts, actually tried as long as practical. Yeah, and he doesn't understand why Dirks feels slighted. It's kind of weird because, I mean, by all accounts, he tried to name it with his name. Yeah. And and tried to make sure everyone knew it was his invention. He just yeah, he fixed the engineering mistake. Of, yeah, he corrected a lot of people. on. Yeah, he, he corrected a lot of people. A, he did his best. But Pepper's ghost was just too goddamn catchy of a name. Yeah. Uh, Pepper died in 1900. Dirks died in 1873. And that is the end of the story. Now... What's interesting, though, is not just how it got started, but the legacy it's had even since. Right. And it's a crazy, crazy legacy. We got about ten minutes, so we got just a perfect <laughs> amount of time. All right. Um, yeah. By the time Pepper's death, the illusion had just some, already become something of a parlor trick. It mm-hmm. was already popular at carnivals, and there was a a gimmick where they would turn a girl into a gorilla using it. Right. Which I mean, that's just being. St- Stupid. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, you know. <laughs> hey, I thing. feel bad for the gorilla. The gorilla is stuck in this probably tiny room. Yeah. Forced to be fairly still. Yeah, probably. Have you ever watched gorillas at the zoo? They're not very stationary animals. Uh, it depends. But anyways, um, they had a thing where they would turn yeah. a girl into a gorilla. <clears throat> and of course, when haunted attractions started, haunted houses started becoming a thing, and especially right around the 1960s, it got picked up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. <clears throat> but here's one thing you might not realize: is that every um, news show, every political speech you've watched in recent years, has been made possible by Pepper's Ghost. Yeah. Because teleprompters use the exact same illusion to let the camera shoot. Through the glass where the words are projected onto, so they can look straight into the camera, but uh, and read the words. It's Pepper's ghost. Just freaking cool. That's how teleprompters work. So your no. local newscast, Pepper's ghost. No, and there's I'm not a ghost about on that news. <laughs> <laughs> there's a ghost on the news. Well, it's fun. It, it's <laughs> anyways. Yeah. And the studio is haunted. The studio is haunted by a bunch of Pepper's ghost. <laughs> yes. Um. Also. Quote unquote holograms. I was very disappointed to learn this. Uh-huh. But a lot of the quote unquote holograms you've been reading about are just Pepper's ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> that remember that uh, Tupac hologram from Coachella and the Michael Jackson one on, on the Grammys? Yeah. They were actually Pepper's ghosts. Yeah. Which means the people on stage with them, I think it was Snoop Dogg and the Tupac one. Yes. Um they couldn't see what the audience was seeing. Right. An actual hologram, Snoop Dogg would have been able to see him. Right, exactly. But, because uh, a hologram works off completely different technology. But with a Pepper's Ghost, all he's seeing is the glass, and he's trying to perform in pantomime with someone that isn't there. Mm-hmm. That, that's got to be rough. And interestingly enough, in India and Turkey, the leaders have used Pepper's Ghosts to project themselves when giving political speeches. So basically, like, you, you want to see the speech in person, you go to one of the locations where they're hosting it, and you see the, your your president or whatever, leader. prime minister, or leader, yeah. um, there as a Pepper's Ghost giving the speech. Yeah. <coughs> In multiple locations, yeah, which it, is pretty cool. Yeah, they did it 53 locations at once in India. And, and yeah, and honestly, and that's something I was thinking about, though, is since they're reading from a teleprompter. Right. So it's a Pepper's Ghost reading from a Pepper's Ghost? It is. Double haunted! <laughs> 
Oh, man. And in 2019, the Royal Collection Trust uh, used it to project a whole room of ghostly dancers on a stage. It looked really cool. Mm-hmm. That actually, the video for that is in the Mental Flaws article. Right. You want to check it out? And I did not know this when we were there. I did not either. Durham Cathedral uses a Pepper's Ghost to display information about St. Cuthbert's Coven. We saw it. Yeah. We saw this. Um, and just never struck me that it was a Pepper's Ghost. No. I'm going, that's cool. They got this weird little hologram thing going on for the text. Yeah, exactly. Not not a hologram. No, no, it was just a Pepper's Ghost. And also, anytime, if you have one of those fancy car dashboard interfaces, it uses it too. Right. So that it projects it onto the windshield. That's kind of the weird thing. Is like This started out as this big scientific thing. Like, oh my God, this is blowing everyone's mind. This, yeah. This, in- this invention. Then it became a parlor trick. And now it's seeing so many practical applications. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like it's come full circle. That's how, you know, big science kind of works a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. So, yeah, in haunted attractions, the most famous is the dance hall at the Haunted Mansion. I already discussed it once. It's a 90-foot-long sequence, and it works beautifully, having seen it myself. It's a lot easier for them to do it because, A, they're Disney, yeah. and, B, they know exactly where the viewer is going to be. Right, and they built the room specifically for it. <laughs> you mean they didn't have to tear out all the seats in the theater to put the no, ghost under them? <laughs> they did not. Also, it's used in a scene in Tower of Terror, and there is also, they use it at Universal Studios, also in Orlando, at the Hogwarts Express. Yeah. But of course, countless other ones use it, not Scary Farm, famously has a scene with it. And yeah, there's we've seen it in like Chamber of Horrors. Mm-hmm. Is what I call the old spook house style, where every room is something different. There's no cohesiveness, right. no plot, yeah. nothing to it. It's just trope one, trope two, trope. It could be very effective and a lot of fun. Yeah, and they're not all tropes, but, but, but there are a lot. But 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 classic yeah. scene, classic scene. Right. You know, you'll go from the mad scientist to the morgue scene to the like that. There's yeah. no story. Right. There. There's no cohesiveness. Exactly. Um, but they, uh, it was not a high budget haunt, and they had a Pepper's Ghost. Mm-hmm. And you said you said it was one of the more effective ones yeah. you've seen it. And the main thing with Pepper's Ghost is that it requires people to look at it for an extended period of time. No, yeah. the haunted mansion works because you got ninety linear feet of travel, mm-hmm. and you got this big huge thing that of course you're going to be looking at. It can be a li- that's the hardest part about making it work in a haunted attraction is getting people to stop, look at it, yeah. and see it. Yeah, and that's, that's I think, why the uh, one in Chambers worked, is because you were coming down a hallway, and it was at the end of the hallway. Yeah. So you got to Positioning see was important on that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, it, it it's Pepper's Ghost is obviously a big thing in haunted attractions, but, my God, is it... <laughs> I, I had no idea this Victorian English technology was such a crucial part of our modern world. Yeah. Exactly. Just crazy to think about that. Yeah. This, this stupid thing that we do to put a ghost in a chair in haunted houses <laughs> is... Is uh, used by pilots. Is used by pilots. It's used by your local newscasters. Yeah. Oh, my. It's, it's used everywhere. Uh-huh. Wow. It's just crazy. What else? So that's roughly the history of Pepper's Ghost. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we're going to link to the Mental Floss article that inspired this and gave us a lot of the information. We'll also link to the book so you can try to read that. I don't know. It's not a recommended read because, like you said, it's not all. It says it's the history of the ghost. Right. Not a lot of history. It's a lot of letters, a lot of yeah. randomness. Uh, there was one other. Um, there is apparently a Magic School Bus episode oh, yes. about Pepper's Ghost that we were going to watch before this, but we didn't get a chance. But I'm putting it here so that if you have time and want to watch it, um, it is out there. Yeah, and they used it kind of in the Bill Nye-ish way of explaining mm-hmm. how light reflections work. Exactly. <clears throat> Which, honestly, if you're a high school, if you're a physics teacher, yeah. this is a great way to understand light reflection and refraction. Mm-hmm. So, it is. Build, build a Pepper's Ghost. Set up yeah, a Pepper- and it's called um, Gets a Bright Idea. Okay. That's the episode title. Check it out. Okay. So that brings us back to the question of the week. And boy, howdy, have we gotten some answers. We have. All right, let's start going through them. Crystal, take the lead. All right. So Chris Gay said, I cannot not white guy dance to spooky, scary skeletons. Yeah, I I might be out in the yard going, spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> yeah. You were kind of doing that before the podcast. I already ratted you out. Um, 
Greg Reinhardt said favorite song is Keeping Halloween Alive Which by Alice Cooper. Which is another great one. I, I love Keeping Halloween Alive by Alice Cooper. Honestly, yeah. Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie are two musicians yeah. that... Okay, yeah, that was that was nice of him to make an actual just direct Halloween song. Right. But, come on, I mean, you can't say that, you know, like any Alice Cooper song won't, won't fit this role, too. Yeah. Don Garlic said, what immediately puts me in spooky mood is Halloween theme song. Yep. Uh, Pete Blackwell, All Hallows Eve by Typo Negative. Yep. Um, Ty Rowley, Pumpkinhead Harvey. Which I think I've heard, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to yeah. have to look up that one. Yeah, I, I it's the Kenny Omega theme. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't watch AEW, don't, don't, <laughs> don't worry, don't, don't about, worry that, about, about it. You're fine. Yeah. And uh, Japes answered with Apex Twin Come to Daddy. Is that a Halloween yes, song? Yes, absolutely it is. It, yeah. it, 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 abs- <laughs> it absolutely he, he also recommended a different version of the video. Oh. So apparently there's a worse video than the original. No. <laughs> fuck you fuck you japes i thought you were my friend i thought you liked me <laughs> shows you what you know <laughs> a worse version than one the, 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 like the little girls with his face and all that is worse than that because uh, uh, we discussed it before on this podcast it's like i don't have a like uncanny valley stuff like it, it, it squicks me. It's not like a phobia. I don't go running away from it. It's like eh, I'd rather not be here. You know, right. I'd rather be anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um. So come to daddy is like the epitome. It's like a, it's like a five minute squeezing of that. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's very. I love the song and I love Aphex Twin, but it, and knowing about how he makes his music is absolutely hilarious because people try to replicate his music on guitar. On like the guy, oh, yeah, learn how to play Aphex Twin on the guitar. Uh-huh. It's like. Really? Because I did the audio sample, I flipped it upside down, spun it around, slapped it on its ass. And sm- <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't actually do that on a guitar. <laughs> the way you would, the way you would compose a lot of his music no. was wild. But, oh, man. Okay, there's a worse version. And now yeah. I'm... <sighs> so on that note, everyone. <laughs> on that terrifying note. <laughs> um... That's it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for spending the past hour. I'm sorry. I'm still a little bit fucked up here. <laughs> I'm dealing with this, all right? I'm sorry. Jeez. Maybe you could have kept that one to yourself until after the podcast. Maybe it won't be, you know. Um, Maybe it'll tickle something different or whatever. Exactly. Maybe it won't be, you know, all that. the little scary of him. Children with his yes. uh, very adult face. Yes, exactly. <sighs> anyway. Thank you for spending the past hour with us. We hope you learn, enjoyed learning about the history of Pepper's Ghost, and I hope you were as fascinated by it as we were. It was yeah. a very, very interesting thing to learn about. I really did not expect that that history would be interesting enough to justify a 2,000-word article, let alone a one-hour podcast, mm-hmm. but dear God was it. So thank you again for joining us. If you want to see, hear more of us, if you didn't get enough, you can go to hauntweekly.com. All the previous episodes are available there. We're also Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, and YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly is our YouTube channel. All of the previous episodes are available there for quick and easy, simple listening. Yes. Very, very easy way to get your uh, Haunt Weekly fix. But you can also do it on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you podcast. Yeah. We're there. But until next time, everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week. Well, not see. It's a pot. You know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs>